There was so much joy on that set. Uh, we did feel, I think we said it was a little bit like being in repertory theater. You know, we were all there together, uh, continually rejoining each other, coming back, but we all sort of had a, a previous history with each other. Most of us did. Congratulations on the Gilded Age. Uh, it's a really exciting, interesting show. And uh, first few episodes have been really, really good. Great. Well, I'm, thank you. I'm glad you've enjoyed them. <laughs> uh, well, your character, Aurora Fine, uh, especially in a couple of episodes, and you're acting as like a bridge to help carry Coon's character, Bertha, on her journey into established society. But Aurora also has to please her older friends. So what was it like to play a character who's balancing those, uh, playing that balancing act? Well, you know, I think that um, we all sort of carry what we're raised with, what's sort of in our in our bl blood and in our bones, and then what we also sort of know what might be right. And so we start to make decisions, and as hard as it is to erase the past, we kind of have to go forward. And, and Aurora Fane has reasons to go forward. Um, some of them, you know, have to do with blackmail, <laughs> but yeah. I, I'd like to think that Aurora Fane also wants to, um, wants to buck the system a tiny bit, um, but very, very carefully. And she's been around long enough to maybe do it right. Do you think she's trying to angle her way to get to like uh, a leadership position within the society? I think Aurora Fane at this point just doesn't want to be on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's just trying to stay, stay in, you know? Mm. Well, as a Broadway legend yourself, uh, you've seen New York evolve over the years, and this show takes you all the way back to a whole other era of New York. Was it exciting to see that part of New York history come alive in the show while you're making it? Well, that was sort of the neatest part. I mean, we had the mm. most beautiful um, set, Bob Shaw's sets, the art direction we had. We had this world that was created for us, full with cobblestone streets and horses and buggies and Fifth Avenue brownstones. Um, it really did feel so real at times. I walked into a, a set where it was an old shop and there were beautiful artifacts to be you know, tried on and bought, little spectacles, little bags, boots, everything. And you feel um, not just that you're on a movie set or something, but that you're actually there for a second. And so that was really, really fun. But at the same time, learning about this part of our history, some of it's pretty gross. You know, the Gilded Age, yeah. was, it was a period of time that we, that I'm so glad we moved out of. And then there are certain things that feel really timely and that's not such a great thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, going into that, I remember you recently said that you wanted to only do Broadway productions that have a diverse cast and crew. And the Gilded Age also has that. Uh, were you impressed that Julian Fellows was able to work the diversity and the difficult subjects into this show, even though it is set, you know, over 100 years ago? Absolutely. But I mean, I think these stories happened. I think that mm. we just don't always tell them, you know, and and uh, the wonderful thing that happened with The Gilded Age and HBO in general is that um, they brought on a co-writer in Sonia War Warfield. You know, they brought on a, an executive producer and another executive producer co-director in Sally Richardson Whitfield. So um, we had the tools and the um, the voice, the voices to um, put together these stories in a uh, respectful and, and, and realistic way. Um, I don't think we're telling anything new. We're just telling it. And I, I was really impressed that HBO uh, wanted to do that. And I wanted to be a part of something like that. And a lot of you and other members of the cast have said in the past that one of the cool things about the show was that it gave so many theater actors uh, opportunities to work while Broadway was shut down. Um, did that did that help like chemistry build chemistry on the set that you all had this this thing in common uh, and you and you were all working together so you've known so many of them for years. Did that just bring bring sort of like a sense of camaraderie? Absolutely. I mean, I think there was so much joy on that set. Uh, we did feel, I think we said it was a little bit like being in repertory theater. You know, we were all there together, uh, continually rejoining each other, coming back. But we all sort of had a, a previous history with each other. Most of us did. And a lot of these people are my heroes, you know. And so to be, not only to be working, which at that moment when we started was such a, an indulgent thing, 
uh, but to be working in this way at this level mm -hmm. with these people, um, I was constantly pinching myself. So the whole the whole experience was a gift. It's it's so impressive that 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 this whole production just come up comes off so well when there there's so many so many COVID protocols going on in the background. Yeah, yeah, no one, I mean, they they really honestly did move mountains to make this work. I mean, mm. we had nurses, we had a whole medical staff, we had constant testing, um, constant, you know, the masking was very specific. You know, you had people just, just to come and bring you the bag to put your mask in so they didn't touch it. You know, you had all sorts of things going on. And, and I really marveled at how we, we all just did it. We did it for each other. We didn't, people didn't complain. We were so grateful to be there. That whatever it was asked, ever whatever was asked of us was easy to do. It seemed like it must have been like a cathartic experience, you know, after so much that had gone on before. Absolutely, it was incredibly mm -hmm. cathartic, um, and it also made me just love the fact that we're that we we're all artists, and that nothing's going to stop that from happening, you know. And alongside all the veterans on the show, you also have Louisa Jacobson uh, making her series debut. And she just seems like a natural right away. And you, you share a lot of scenes with her. Uh, has it been an, an, a joy to work with a new generation of stars on the show? An absolute joy. I really <laughs> enjoyed working with Louisa and with Danae Benton. And, you know, she is a natural. Um, but it's not it's not just because of, you know, her lineage. She's worked very hard. You know, she she went to Yale Drama School. She, um, she works very hard on set at all times. Uh, really worrying what she's doing and how she's doing it and if she's doing it well and correctly and and deeply and honestly and and i was there to watch that and i appreciated that in a, a younger actress and um and very respectful of the process and i think everybody was and you had a lot of big personalities as you can imagine <laughs> yeah. and yet um people were respectful of the process that we all had to work together and make this happen so going into the rest of the season are we expecting aurora to make some more uh you know, moves along the show. <laughs> you know, I, I have big plans for Aurora. I don't know about anybody <laughs> else, but but I do. I think that uh, her story continually gets more interesting as we go through season one, and then we'll we'll see what the future holds. I also want to ask you. Uh, earlier this season, you you made an appearance on Blue Bloods, uh, which was the first time in ten years you were on that show, and you played the same character. So what was that that kind of experience where you were, you know, there, there's a lot of those uh, police dramas where people come back and they play different roles, but you were, you came back and you played this part from 10 years ago. Uh, what was that that experience like? You know, it was really, it was neat. It's like no time had passed. Um, Bridget and I started talking about our, our kids and I remember us talking about them 10 years ago. Uh, they were very small boys and now they're grown up uh, or bigger uh young men, her son especially. And it was really fun. I, Lisa Farragut, the, the role I played was this personal friend of the character. And so I think they just called and said, we'd like to bring her back. And I, I great, I'm already established. You know, I didn't have to uh, reinvent the wheel on that one. And we had two really fun days and that was it. Would you come back if they asked again? No, oh, sure. I had a great yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, one last question I had for you. Uh, a few years ago, you were in Peter Pan Live and those those um, those TV productions really help bring theater to places far outside of New York City. And, you know, this this year they did Annie. Um, would you want to try to do another one? And do you appreciate how how much those productions help, you know, carry your artwork, your art form further than Broadway? Yeah, you know, listen, nothing is like live theater. Live theater is my favorite thing in the world. Um, I had a great time doing Peter Pan live. Um, and I do know what it feels like to be in the middle of Western Oklahoma and not see any live productions. And we didn't have these these musicals on the TV when I was a kid. So I really support the fact that they get the reach out there. Um, so I, I would be open for anything. Uh, I feel like it's a it's a real gift when you can, when you can bring a little bit of theater to people who can't always get to it themselves. Uh, well, Kelly, that's all I got this morning. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your early morning to talk to us. Sure. <laughs> uh, wish you the best of luck on the Gilded Age. Thank you.